Hi guys. Uh, this is only a short one, I think. Um, I'm just putting a bit of thread on something here, a piece of 5 8 bar rod, and uh, it occurred to me to show a couple of things that I rather like to do when threading. Uh, most people have their own methods and uh, you know it's basically what works for the individual but the two things that I was going to point out I think are well worth considering because they save, oh, for me anyway, they save a bit of time and maybe a bit more accuracy. Uh, one is having an indicator on the uh, compound and having a stop for the cross slide. Uh, that means that it saves having to sort of have a zero on the cross slide and go back to that each time which means you've got to look at the dial and be fairly careful. Uh, the stop makes it for me a lot easier and uh, I've got a bit of close-up footage of that. It's quite a handy uh, addition that I made many years ago. So I'm just going to take a few cuts on here just to sort of demo what I'm doing with this setup. And oh, I, I noticed again as some probably have observed when you drop something it always tends to travel you look at where it probably hit the floor and it's nowhere to be seen even if it's something which isn't round <laughs> have you noticed that it's ridiculous I dropped an end mill earlier on in its little plastic case and it was nowhere near where it where it hit the ground Ridiculous. Anyway, that's that's uh, quite incidental. All right, I'll just show you these uh, odd little bits and uh, come back at the end of it. All right. I've already taken about 40 thou off here, so I'm really just coming in part of the way through what I'm doing. The dial indicates you may or may not see very clearly, but if I bring the cross slide back, and then return, come back, return. It brings me back to the same spot and then if I put in, in this case, I'm only taking light cuts, if I wind in two thou on there and I'm running back here, also incidentally, may be visible, before I started threading I made my uh, relief groove so I'll just take a cut or two here. There you go. A bit of a long wait for the uh, thread dial to come round. And being an odd number, I've only got two options, so that makes things a bit slower. Anyway, hopefully you could see there that I come back to my last indicator setting, and then I can wind on whatever I want with the uh, compound. Helps me to keep tabs on it. This is a 5 8 11. Uh, which I think has to go down to about 55,000 if I remember. So I've got a bit more to do to finish it. But anyway, that was just to show you these two points. Not trying to teach people how to thread so much as just mentioning these two little features that I find extremely useful. Alright? So just throwing in a slightly closer look, I just realised you may not be able to see very much. I think you might hopefully be able to see the indicator. It's coming back to 45 thou each time I put the cross slider over and then uh, the next cut will be about another 2 thou. 
easy to keep track of. You see I get a pretty positive stop and I added this long ago. I just unlock it and in the normal course of events that bar, half inch bar, will just push out and that is, can you hear that? That's up against the lead screw. Flip that round and lock it. Back to where we were. Okay. There you are. Just something real quick there. Um, not all lathes would necessarily adapt to uh, allow a cross slide stop to work the same as mine, although the principle is fairly simple. And uh, as I said, the indicator on the compound I find very, very useful. Well, I'm not doing much out here. The temperatures are pretty silly. Um, I'm also waiting for a new bandsaw blade for my small three-wheel bandsaw, which I'm going to use to rough out the quill stop profile. So I don't know when I'll next be out here. We've got some very cold coming with some snow, so it may well be a good week or more. So this is just a small filler, really. <laughs> maybe of interest, maybe not. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon, I hope. Bye for now.